Let's talk for just a minute about how to solve equations that have absolute values in them. We call these absolute value equations, obviously. So we'll start with a simple example. Let's say we have, instead of just x equals a, what if we had the absolute value of x equals a? In other words, we're trying to find the value of x so that if you took the absolute value of it, it would give us a. Well, we remember what absolute value means. When you take the absolute value of a number, that means its distance from zero. So here we're looking for a number whose distance from zero is a units. So on a number line, we could go a units to the right, or we could go a units to the left of zero. And either of these would be solutions. They're both a units away from zero. So to the right of zero, we would get a solution of a, and to the left of zero, we'd get a solution of negative a. So this guy here has two solutions. Um, x could either be a or negative a. So that's kind of strange because linear equations used to only have one answer. Well, this is not really a linear equation. It's an absolute value equation. So even though it might look linear, um, if it has absolute values, very frequently these will have more than, than one answer because there's more than one number whose absolute value might, might give you A. Um, so let, let's try a simple example and then we'll look at a more complicated example. Uh, if we had the absolute value of X equals three, then we're looking for any numbers whose absolute value would be three or you could say it as uh, what numbers are three units away from zero. So you could go to the right three units uh, or you could go to the left three units. So this guy has two solutions. You could have x equals three or x equals negative three. So after talking about those, I think I see what the general pattern is gonna, gonna be. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever's inside the absolute values and, e and set it equal to this number on the right or it's negative, so three or negative three. Now the only catch is, is you might have something more complicated than just an X inside the absolute value and that's totally fine. So for example, if you had the absolute value of MX plus B, let's just say it's linear um, and that's equal to some positive number A, then basically I, I see what needs to happen either that stuff on the inside has to be a or negative a, as, as I said earlier. The only catch is, is that you might not be done solving for x quite yet. So once you set up these two different equations, then you continue on your way to figure out what the x actually has to be. Now, why would I prefer two equations like this as opposed to just a single equation? Because this looks like more work, not less. Well, well the benefit to having these two equations is that um, these guys do not have any um, absolute values. And, and that makes it easy to solve because I can use my old regular rules to, to solve for x. If you have an equation that has absolute values, you cannot do things like subtract b from both sides to cancel these b's. You can't do that sort of thing because of these absolute values that are present in the equation. So when you rewrite them as two separate equations equal to a and negative a without absolute values, then you can solve those uh, two different equations uh, as normal. All right, so let's, let's try a more involved example here. Let's say we were trying to solve for x where the equation was absolute value three minus x equals seven. Well, I don't know what x needs to be, but what I do know is that three minus x, you know, that quantity total, three minus x, had really better be either negative seven or seven. Now, why? Why would it have to be those two things? Well, the absolute value of negative seven is seven, and the absolute value of positive seven is seven. So three minus x really needs to be those two numbers. Uh, but now once I have these two equations, then I can solve uh, for x. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly but we would subtract three from both sides. Um, let's just do this equation first. So we'll have negative x equals negative seven minus three makes minus 10. And that would give us x equals positive 10. So there's one answer. 
Uh, or we could have uh, negative x equals 7 minus 3, which would be 4, and in which case x would be negative 4. So these would be the, the two solutions to this equation here that has absolute values. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but you could take 10 and negative 4 and try plugging them in for x and then seeing if you actually get 7, and, and I think you do. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it. You take the inside of whatever is inside the absolute values and set it equal to this number and the negative of, of this number here. All right, before I let you go, let me just give you a couple of extra little, little side comments, a few notes here. Um, you won't get any solutions if what your absolute value expression is set equal to is negative. See, if you had, for example, the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals negative 8, it would do you no good to set 2x minus 5 equal to negative 8 and positive 8. Just think about this big picture. The absolute value of any number is going to be positive or at the very least zero. You can't get a negative out of an absolute value and, and you know why. It's because the absolute value tells you di the distance from zero but distance can't be negative. And so this guy would have no solutions. So if you ever have an absolute value expression set equal to a negative, don't do anything. There's nothing to do. Automatically this has no solutions. There's no x that would make the absolute value of anything be negative eight. All right, and second note, final note, um, when you do this thing where you set uh, your absolute value equal to the positive of a number and the negative of a number and all those sorts of things, you can't do that until the absolute value expression is isolated. So here in this example, we have that three times the absolute value of x plus five minus one equals 11. Well, we're not going to set anything equal to 11 and negative 11. We're not going to do all that because this absolute value expression right here is not isolated. So you would have to do things like add one to the right and divide by three and you know do whatever you need to do to get the absolute value of x plus five all by itself on the left hand side. Then whatever that number is on the right hand side, you could set it equal to you know whatever you need to set it equal to but don't do anything until that absolute value expression is isolated all by itself so you might have a little bit of work uh, to do on the front end so anyways that's how we solve equations that have absolute values in them